do you need to worry about the lithium ion batteries that are in and around your house potentially starting a fire? Well, yes, and also no. And I'll answer this question by discussing a whole bunch of statistics in relation to lithium ion battery fires. Now, these statistics are pretty eye-opening as in some ways the batteries are far safer than what I expected, but in other ways, which is just completely underreported, uh, it is actually far more dangerous. And so I'll divide this video into two sections of part one being big batteries and then part two being smaller batteries. And when I say big batteries, I'm referring to electric vehicles. And so according to EV Firesafe, there have been approximately 511 battery fires and electric vehicles all across the world. Now in Australia, we're host to six of them. But since this report, there's two more battery electric vehicle fires in Australia. I'll add them into the statistics that I'm gonna be talking about. And so as for these two additional fires, uh, one was in September in 2023. Yeah, there was an MG battery electric vehicle and the battery pack sustained some physical damage. And then sometime later, it just went up into flames when it was parked at Sydney airport. And the other one was in September, 2024. And although it was initially reported in the media that this was caused by overcharging, uh, the actual cause of this fire was from a dodgy travel adapter. And after the travel adapter caught fire, it then spread to the garage and then it spread to the external of the car and then it spread to the battery pack of the car. So anyway, in all of Australia's modern electric car history, there has only been eight fires. And the causes of these eight fires is one was from arson. Four of them were due to the battery pack basically being in the path of a bigger and badder fire, whether it be a structure fire or bushfire, whatever. And three were actually caused after physical damage to the battery pack. And after physical damage, whether it be minutes or hours later, the battery pack then erupted into flames. So out of the eight battery electric vehicle fires that have happened in Australia, only three of them were caused from the battery itself. And three is an incredibly low number when you consider that there are approximately 180,000 battery electric and plug-in hybrid vehicles driving around Australia's roads today. And yes, three is worse than zero, but when you consider that there are literally thousands of combustion car fires every year, I mean, in New South Wales, there's 2,800 reported last year. And across all of Australia, it's pretty much hard to get precise numbers, but it's approximately between 5,000 to 10,000 combustion car fires every year. And so just from looking at these statistics, I personally believe there is a lot of unjustified fear around these battery electric vehicle packs. And so that's big batteries. But now let's move on to the batteries that actually are dangerous. And these are the small lithium ion batteries. And when I say small, I'm referring to anything that is the size of an ear pod to an e-bike battery or a scooter battery. In an ABC News article from Pragmatic Research, which was funded by the Waste and Recycling Bodies of Australia, estimates that between 10,000 to 12,000 battery fires are started every year in either the garbage trucks or the rubbish processing facilities. And this is basically caused by lithium ion batteries that have just been thrown into the rubbish and then crushed by compactors or crushed by other rubbish and so on and so forth. And to add on to this statistic, uh, Fire and Rescue New South Wales stated that roughly 1% of the fires that they responded to in 2023 were caused by lithium ion batteries. Furthermore, the Department of Fire and Emergency Services, otherwise known as the Western Australian Fireys, poured 110 lithium battery fires in 2023. And out of that 110, 31 of them came from e-bikes or scooters. And so clearly the biggest cause of lithium battery fires here. And the second biggest being actually from vapes. And so what actually causes these small lithium battery fires to ignite? Well, breaking or piercing them is the quickest way to cause them to become a fire hazard. If you're a bit new to battery technology, I bet some of you are a little bit paranoid about all the small lithium batteries that are all over your house right now. And you're probably wondering, how do I minimize the risk of these batteries going up in flames? Well, I'll tell you about the common causes of what sets these alight. And so then you know to minimize these risks. And so the biggest and baddest risk to avoid is that you want to avoid either dropping them, smashing them, piercing them, or breaking them in any style or form. Now, generally speaking, for well-made devices, they're pretty well armored. In fact, this is pretty much why incidents of electric vehicle fires are so low, even though they have such big batteries, because the car manufacturers actually put so much armor in these battery packs that although the car may be in a collision, it's unlikely to damage the battery itself. 
And so if you were to accidentally penetrate, drop, bash or bend a battery, just be mindful that it may burst into the flames in the immediate future. Now, another common cause is overcharging. And so how do you avoid overcharging? Well, this is pretty easy. If you're using a device from say Apple, Google or Samsung and you're using the proper charger, you won't need to think about it at all. And this is because the software between the charger and the device can say, well, hey, I'm getting a little bit overcharged and a little bit too hot here, and then I'll stop receiving charge. However, overcharging can be a risk though when you're using a non-approved or some cheap third-party charger, and then the software and the device that it's charging cannot tell the charger to say, hey, I'm overcharged, stop charging me, and it continues to charge it and charge it and charge it until it gets overcharged and then sets the whole thing alight. Now, with that being said, there's also been a lot of people using the correct charger for e-bikes and e-scooters, and they've gone up in flames as well just because the entire uh, components of the device were, were cheaply made. And in my humble opinion, this is an industry that needs to be more heavily regulated. It's, uh, we don't really see many instances of car fires or phone fires anymore, but uh, for scooter fires, it seems to be very frequent. But anyway, I'm going on a bit of a side tangent there, so I'll get back to the topic at hand. All right, so penetrative collisions and overcharging are the two biggest causes of fires. And now I'll start winding up this video and I'll just point out another interesting thing about the fires in these batteries as well. And that is that the intensity of the fire is directly correlated to the state of charge as when the fire happened. So as an example, if the battery is only charged at 10% and it were to experience a penetrative collision, we am probably just get a quick puff of smoke. However, if the battery is charged at 100%, you'll probably see something that's similar to those worst videos you've seen on the internet where the jets of uh, flames are shooting out on both sides and it looks very scary. And a quick note if this were to happen to you as well, is that <clears throat> uh, the smoke coming from these fires is far worse than the fire itself. And so just be mindful that you do not want to be breathing in any of the fumes if this were to happen. All right, so now we'll move on to the final conclusion about all of this. If you have a battery electric vehicle or a plug-in hybrid or even a hybrid, you don't really have much to worry about just so long as you, you use the vehicle in the way that's intended to be used and you stick to the official accessories and you don't do anything weird or wacky with it. But if you're still worried about the fire risk, you can also look at the, some of the newer electric vehicles that are coming out as well that are made out of lithium ion phosphate batteries rather than lithium ion NMC, which is nickel, manganese and cobalt. But with these lithium ion phosphate batteries, even at 100% charge, if, you were to, if it were to experience a penetrative collision, it won't burst into flames like the NMC batteries will. And it's pretty much an all Chinese made electric cars and it will be pretty soon available in most electric car brands as well. And the same applies for getting a power wall as well. Lithium ion phosphate is definitely a great battery chemistry choice if you are to get a power wall. And now for the small batteries. If you have an e-bike, a scooter or a vape, just be mindful that this is the battery in that device is a legitimate risk. If possible, try to only charge it in a situation where if it were to catch a light, there wouldn't be any secondary fire sources that it could that it could catch onto. For example, if you're charging your bike or your scooter, try and have it outside on concrete, so that way if it were to catch a light, the concrete won't catch a light as well. Or if it's a vape, definitely do not let it sit on your pillow or your bed sheets, and, uh, and try to have it somewhere where if it were to catch a light, it's got nothing to uh, start a secondary fire with it as well. Now, if you have a tech device, like say a tablet, a laptop, a mobile phone, and you were to drop it or you would drop a, a dumbbell onto it or you accidentally bend it or something like that, uh, just be mindful that it is at higher risk of uh, starting a fire within the immediate future. If you see any hiss or puffs of smokes, uh, it's already too late and the phone could go from room temperature to 600 degrees in a matter of seconds. So it's a little bit too risky to pick it up in that situation. And if it isn't hissing or puffing yet, just be mindful of that it may start to hiss or puff the next time you charge it. And now to probably the most important thing that you can do that will probably prevent the most amount of fires from lithium ion batteries. And that is how you get rid of them. Please hand them into places that specifically accept lithium ion batteries rather than just throwing it into the bin. Uh, so you, your local dump, uh, Officeworks, JB Hi-Fi, they all have facilities where you can hand in old lithium ion batteries to be disposed of properly and safely. So. Anyway, I hope you found these statistics useful about lithium-ion batteries and the risk of fire. And if you did like this video, uh, please leave me a like and subscribe on all that other stuff that all YouTubers say. Thanks for watching. Bye.